eight key elements that I think you should include in your research proposal. Welcome to GN Inspire, a platform where we share all things education, career, personal development. And in this episode, I'll be sharing with you eight elements that I think should be included in any great proposal, as well as reading out loud examples from my, my own PhD proposal, a proposal that I wrote back then in 2014. If you enjoy this kind of content, kindly consider subscribing. I'll appreciate. Before we begin, I want to share a disclaimer. Number one, that the proposal examples that I'll read from my proposal, my, my proposal was for a PhD in engineering. So it might look or sound very different from social science, for instance. But I know, even with that said, that whatever field you are in, all of these proposals, all of these research proposals will share kind of common thread or common elements. Some of these elements that I'll share. Your proposal will differ mostly based on three things. Number one, the university you are applying to. In my case, I was applying to the University of Oxford and they were okay with one page. Yeah, I was also super surprised. And I feel so sad that I wasted a lot of my time stressing and, and feeling paralyzed because I thought a proposal should be like 50 pages or so. After all, it's at the University of Oxford right they they were okay with one page in fact when i was preparing for this video i actually checked the word count for my proposal that i wrote back then in 2014 it was exactly 625 words so the length the content of your proposal will really differ based on the uni you are applying to number two it will differ based on the level of education an undergrad proposal might be different from a master's or a PhD proposal or a postdoc proposal. And number three, field of study. Your proposal in engineering or my proposal in engineering will definitely be slightly different or totally different from a proposal in social science, for instance. So while I share these elements, you keep that in mind. But I know most of these research proposals for master's, for PhD, for postdoc, they'll share most of these eight key elements. The first one is title, number two, introduction, number three, literature review, number four, research questions, number five, research methods, number six, conclusion, number seven, references, number eight, any other business or what I call AOB and I'll tell you what is in that AOB. Some people have more elements but if you ask me, I think if your proposal has all these eight elements, it would be a great proposal. When I read my proposal now, I feel like there are so many things that I, some things, not so many, some things that I missed. But luckily, it had most of these eight elements. And so it was good. And that is what I got into Oxford with. N number one, title. Title should be brief, descriptive, and catchy. And don't swear too much here because the title is not cast on stone. It's mostly, most likely going to change. For instance, in my case, let me read out my proposal title. The title in my proposal was Research Proposal on Turbine Heat Transfer and Cooling. Totally different from the, from the title that I had in my final thesis when I submitted my PhD thesis. The title for my PhD thesis was Study of Double Wall Efficient Cooling Scheme for Gas Turbine Blade Applications. So don't sweat too much there. Just look for a short, descriptive, catchy title. You'll be good to go. Number two, introduction. Here on the introduction, I would say be concise. Choose your words very wisely. But the introduction should be broad, kind of introducing us to broader aspects of your field so that anyone can understand what you are researching, even people who are not in your field. So for instance, in my case, I'm not saying mine was perfect, but this is just an example of introduction that I used personally when I was writing my research proposal. 
In my introduction, I said gas turbines are used for propulsion in aerospace as well as in automotive industries. Three sentences, really. But from my introduction, even if you are not an expert in my field, I think you will walk away knowing that Gladys is researching some things in aerospace propulsion, just some rough idea of what I'm, of what I'm, I'm doing. Introduce us broadly into the area. Number three, literature review so here you've not done the study yet so you will go deeper later telling us lots and lots of literature but here in your proposal give a summary of literature tell us the research you're proposing to do what are you basing on tell us brief literature what is available on the topic what is available on the approach, approaches that have other people have used, approaches and method or methodologies that other people have used. And don't forget to reference at least maybe, I would say maybe one to five, give us at least one to five um, references, what I call Bibles. You know, those key papers, materials, books that anyone in that field must read, or at least anyone in that field at least knows give us those materials and I'll give us to give, give reference to those materials Re read and give reference to those materials and remember while you are writing this literature review it's not a random story you just you you're not just reporting random stories be intentional choosing your words remember you have a word limit most of the time so you build up this story so that you expose a gap or a need for your research, where your research will kind of fit into. So you tell us this is what exists in this topic, what has been done, just really briefly, methods that have been used, but then there is still this gap, or there is still this need to do further research, and that is where your research is coming in. I would say towards the end of your literature review, make it very clear in a sentence or two, the need for your proposed research. This is how I wrote my literature review. Gas turbine designers desire to achieve the optimum power output as well as thermal efficiency from any gas turbine that they develop. There are, there are several ways available for improving the efficiency of a gas turbine. As you can see, I'm starting to talk about the topic, gas turbine cooling. And then I'm, I'm starting to talk about several ways available. I'm talking about methods or methodologies or approaches that people use in that field. And some of these methodologies are employing regeneration techniques, reheating, intercooling, etc., etc. Then I went on to say, out of all the possible efficiency improvement techniques, increasing gas turbine inlet temperature is the most promising method. So I'm kind of giving literature on the available methods. Then I go on blah, blah, blah. However, increasing this turbine, blah, blah. I'm, I'm trying to bring the problem or, or highlight the problem with increasing gas turbine inlet temperature, of increasing turbine inlet temperature, etc., etc. Et but of importance, in the last sentence, I made it very clear. I even used, used the exact words this brings out the need for researching advanced engineering systems to be used for heat management and cooling in propulsion systems. So give us brief literature on the topic, on the methodologies or approaches that have been used before, and then build up the story so that towards the end, in one sentence or two sentences, you tell us plainly where your research, your proposed research will fit in or the need or the gap that still exists. Number four, we go to research questions. Many people combine research questions and research methodologies into one element or into one chapter, and they call it research methodologies or re research methodology. So here, talk about research questions. I would say outline and explain maybe one to three research questions that you are hoping to explore. In my case, the research questions, this is what I said in, 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 my, in my proposal. Again, I've explained in previous episodes, go to episode number six, 
where I talked about how I contacted my professor and how we settled on a research proposal or how he guided me in writing a research proposal. So my research proposal wasn't too specific because we had we had agreed that we'd write a more generic almost gen yeah more generic proposal but still it's important to talk about the research questions that I was going potentially to explore. So here on the research questions these were my research questions. Uh, we said the research project that I'll take up will focus on advanced engineering systems used in modern propulsion systems. ETC, 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 the subject to be researched will be decided following a careful review, blah, blah, blah. And the list to be considered is likely to include intricate cast cooling systems. That will be, that was one of my research questions. And number two, um, reducing coolant temperature within the cooling air system. So here for me, like I mentioned, my research questions were not, I was not very sure by that time, we had agreed that we would write more generic uh, proposal and then would refine once I was in the lab. Number five, research methodology. If you ask me, this is the most important part of a research proposal. And here you are telling us what methods, what approaches will you will you use to explore the research questions that you've just told us? You you might not know everything, and I think the selection committee they do understand that. But what are your initial thoughts on key parameters that you hope to explore? Key parameters that you you, you hope to to re, to research? How will you? What methods or approaches will you use to measure those key parameters? And once you measure those key parameters, then what are the initial thoughts on how you will analyze and validate data or results that you will get from your study using whatever methods you, you, are, you are proposing? So in my case, I said, I will design experiments which will measure key dimensionless parameters here, if I go back, I would, I would add some of those dimensionless parameters. I would at least give one or two as examples rather than just saying gen generally key dimensionless parameters. So that is something that I, I, I would do. The flow and temperature fields will be carefully compared to the computer simulations of the flow for validation and evaluation. I continued. The research pro project will study new cooling technologies suitable for future engines, etc., etc. And I will not be doing this research in isolation. I will be joining a thriving research group. This research will focus on novel cooling schemes, which control component temperatures whilst using minimal cooling air flows, etc., etc. I feel like my methodology section wasn't really well done. Maybe because we were writing a more generic proposal. But if I was to go back, I would write it slightly differently. Then we go to conclusion. Here, take this chance. Measure your words very carefully. And reiterate. Just... Tell us again why this research is really important. This is what I wrote. It is essential to research and implement new effective cooling methods to increase their life lifespan. Let's talk about reference section. So here, remember we referenced some Bibles of our field somewhere when we were preparing literature. So this is where you list those references. I would say one to five would be good. In my case, like I mentioned, I do not even add a single reference. That is also something that I would change if I was to go back then and redraft my proposal. Lastly, let's talk about AOB or any other business. Here, some other elements to consider would be number one, timelines. It will also help if word limits can allow somewhere in your proposal to 
maybe a sentence or two just outline some initial ideas on how you plan like timelines when you plan to do what phd is any research as some of you guys who've gone through some sort of research you would know that whatever timelines you set out in the beginning almost 110 percent those timelines will change but it's still important in your proposal to at least give us some rough ideas just to know or to show that you've actually thought through this so just roughly in a sentence or two tell us roughly your timeline so for i would i would say something like this again this is something that i think i should have added or i would add if i was to redraft my proposal i would add rough timelines i would say something like add uh, i'll use roughly about six months in my first year assuming this is a phd proposal right to sharpen my axe to learn software to dig more into available literature then in my second year i'll start setting up experiments to study research question one i'll then update my experimental setup so as to study research question number two then in my third year i run computer simulations to verify the collected experimental data something like that just rough timelines again timeline will change a lot but just include some initial ideas here on any other business i would say include if you've contacted a professor I would say mention it in a sentence like in my case it was really important to mention that i've secured a professor i would say if you've contacted a professor and i would encourage you if you're preparing a phd proposal it doesn't hurt to contact professors and start communicating with them in, in the whatever field you are interested in whatever lab you are interested in if you want to know how to look and search if you want to know how to get their email addresses, how to draft professional emails, go back to episode six, where I explain all that information. But anyway, I would suggest that you contact potential supervisors so that when you're writing your proposal somewhere towards the end, it, I think it doesn't hurt to add a sentence or two saying that you are already in touch with Professor XYZ in this lab and they've agreed to supervise you if you get admission. Actually, that is what happened in my case. By the time I was drafting my proposal, I had already contacted, I emailed my supervisor. We had Skyped and he had given me his word that if I get admission, he would be willing to supervise me. And so I made sure to include that because I think in the minds of the selection committee, Assuming you have good grades and assuming you have funding. In my case, I already had those two. I had good grades and I had funding, full funding. But in their minds, I think they would be wondering, assuming we admit this student, given that she's coming from a bachelor's degree with no research experience, will she get a supervisor? Or maybe you're writing a proposal and you submit it to a university where they don't, they don't have a professor who is an expert in the field you're proposing, then in that case, they will not give you admission because then there will not be anyone to supervise you in that uni. And so that's why I thought of including that one paragraph to just say that I've spoken to Professor XYZ and they've agreed to supervise me, etc. This is what I said. I have been in touch with Professor So-and-so, the director of this lab. I don't want to expose their details. So that is all for today. For those of you guys who've written research proposals for undergrad, for master's, for PhD, for post-PhD, what are some other elements that I, I might have missed or some, some tricks and hacks that you guys use? Please leave a comment down below so that other people can learn from your experience thank you so much and bye until the next